If anybody is interested in the next week's data game, contact any of the members from SHAM. Hi, this is Alicia LaRue from Shepherd Hills Academic Decathlon Team, and they just had their last meet of the season recently, and Alicia thought she'd show you some of the slides that she took. Yeah, especially since we're looking for new members now. Here we are arriving at North Reading High School at 8 o'clock a.m. Ben had his game face on early. We had time to relax a little bit before the first test at 8.30. Some of us played cards. Elena listened to music. Ben read. And Greg tried to intimidate the other teams with his wardrobe. Before you begin four hours of testing in seven subjects, it's important to have a good supply of consumable sugar products. Now it's off to the first test, mathematics. With each test, the top five scores are counted towards your team score. Kelly and Beth thought we were joking when they found out their math scores counted. Between tests, we could relax in the cafeteria or check scores as they were posted. Unfortunately, by 9.30, Beth had already consumed five donuts, nine Kit Kat bars, 17 Reese's Cups, and two cans of vanilla frosting. Because of her extreme sugar rush, decathlon officials had to put her in a restraining blanket for the remaining tests. Then came the awards. Elena got an honorable mention for social science, and Greg got five honorable mentions for art, economics, music, social science, and astronomy. He also got an award for best dressed. He was even getting his stock quotes between exams. But after all this attention and excitement, poor little Greggy Poo was tuckered out. Before leaving, we tried to get a group photo before <laughs> Beth crashed from a sugar rush, but we were too late. So we loaded her onto the bus, and Kelly called ahead to the sugar detox unit of UMass Medical. This was me when I arrived in the morning, and this was me after four hours of testing. I hope you enjoyed my slideshow. If you're interested in joining the academic decathlon team, we're looking for all grade point averages, A, B, and C. Contact Ms. DeFlaherty for more details. I'm Alicia LaRue for SHAM. Last week, Chama Jim tried to fight his neighbor's man-legged creature, but he got a big old bot to the hand, and Jim was sent a running, but during the chase, the creature fell into a super secret trap door, and so did Jim. And Jim was falling faster than a rhino on an 18-wheeler. And Jim was left with these four choices. A. Keep falling. B. Try to fly. C. Use his rocket pack. Or D. Use his rock pack. By the narrowest of margins, the winner is... B. Try to fly. So Jamba Jim did just what you told him to do. So Jamba Jim was falling. And he began to flap his arms like a headless chicken. And he was actually <laughs> Guess this isn't a no-fly zone, Jim. And Jim was falling yet again. But scientists have conclusively proven that a Jumbo Jim always lands on his feet. Looks like Jim could finally go for that walk. Oh no, a Louisiana jelly monster! What should Jumbo Jim do? Should he A. Get consumed by the jelly monster? B. Consume the jelly monster? C. Try to force his way out? Or D. Use his monster collar? to call upon a peanut butter and bread monster and make the monsters duel. What should Jamba Jim do? You'll be the judge. Go to the school's website and vote for Jamba Jim's fate. Say the conclusion next week on sale. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the story you're about to see is true.